All right, guys, welcome to Scenery Made Easy. My name is Mike Mackey. I got my MMR back in 16, and uh, I've been doing this hobby since I was seven, about 17 years old, so that's a long time ago for me. I um, have had the opportunity to um, make my living part of the time, building layouts commercially and privately for people. Um, I've got a client that's uh, here in Dallas that actually does uh, commercial Christmas layouts all around the world. Um, we've done work in Macau, we've done, they do the Bellagio in Las Vegas, they do uh, Rockefeller Center in New York City, they do downtown Dallas, and anytime there's trains, I am the, I'm the official train guy for them, which is very lucrative. It makes my Christmas time very, uh, we did a, a shopping center in, in uh, Los Angeles last year and uh, when they decide they want something they want it right then and so my fall time of my year is very very crowded with getting things done um, we're going to be talking about scenery made easy today who in here thinks they're all thumbs when it comes to scenery oh wow there's more of you than I expected all right all right um, you're from New Orleans correct right yes sir. your name is Tommy Tommy come in for Tommy <laughs> you get to you get to play you get to play in the in the in the phone today. All right. Now I'm going to take Tommy and here's what we're going to do. Tommy, I'm going to give you a pair of gloves here. All right. And uh, I'm going to show you. I, I found a, a technique that I use that I find is and I'm I'm off again back there, Dave. Hello. I went away. Well, it's not on at all in here. You're too loud. <laughs> I can open the door. Your mic's your mic's picking you up just fine. Is am I? Yeah. Y'all hear me on yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, you could. Okay. All right. Y'all can still hear me through the speakers. Yeah. Okay. Because I can't hear me through the speakers. All right. That's fine now. All right. So. Um, a technique that I found is using florist foam uh, to help create uh, to help create scenery and terrain. Um, what you're seeing up here, all of these little things are florist foam. This is from other clinics that I've done uh, using this technique, and we're going to do this today. Okay, Tommy, and you're going to walk out of here with something that you can either take with you or throw in the trash can, whichever you prefer. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'll take it with me. Okay. Right. I'm just starting my second one, so let's okay. get, All right. we're in good shape. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to see if we can uh, teach you how to do a couple things today. Um, the only reason we're putting these on is because we're going to be doing some paint work in a few minutes. And so if we already got them on, we're good. All right? <laughs> so here's a, I went to Hobby, or Michael's last night, and uh, picked up this florist foam here um, and Tommy and I are going to be working up here this is uh, floral craft foam that's all it is okay but the thing about it is it's very functional and how we're going to be able to do this so here's what we're going to do Tommy um, we got a hot glue gun right here we're going to take this and we're going to build this a little base and we can offset it, we can do all kinds of things, we can stack it like this, whatever we want to do. So I want you to take those four pieces right there, <clears throat> and uh, with the hot glue, we're going to sit here and just come in here, if I can get this thing to, it's a brand new hot glue gun. There it goes. Is it hot glue or the, or the kind that's not it's quite low temp or high temp? Yeah. Which is Which is it? It doesn't matter. Is it plugged in? Yeah. 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 It's just not. Push yeah. Yeah. Try that. That's working. Working. There we go. All right. And we're going to take this and let me borrow one of those if you don't mind. And we're just going to put it together just like that. And it's already set. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, while Tommy's doing that, I've got another piece here. Um, I'm going to turn this one a little more vertical and kind of put it at an angle, you know, for lack of anything else. Uh, there you go. 
Oh, you're, oh, look at you go. <laughs> that's probably plenty. Probably That's probably over plenty. Mm. All right. But we've got plenty of glue sticks, Tommy, so you can use them. <laughs> <laughs> How expensive is that phone? What are you doing? Don't steal my stuff, Tommy. All right, man, I'm gonna. Is he always this hard to get along with? Absolutely. Is that right? He's always okay. a problem. All right. Man, you're going all out on this, aren't you? Hey, man. Free stuff. Free stuff. You're going to go at it, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, when I was working for a company here in Dallas that builds train layouts, the, I was introduced to this little tool right here from DeWalt. You can buy it at um, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever your hardware store is. And this is, is a kind of a razor knife. Okay. Now, I've not seen it before, nor had used it before, but this thing is really pretty pretty awesome and what we're going to do here is you can take this and you can just slice this however you want to now you can take it now you understand why we have a trash can up here right and you can start carving your your materials any way you want to and uh, We're done. Now be careful because this thing will cut you. But the other thing is, you can take it and I can just sit here and go right through that stuff, just like that. Okay? Now, I'll let you. Are you going to do two or are you do one? What are you doing? Uh, whatever you gave me, you gave me two, so that works. No, I, oh, I thought you, were, you kept gluing them together. I thought you were just going to build a big, huge mountain or something. No, you want one? That's up to you. You're you're working this. Let's do a mountain. Let's do let's do something. All right. What what tool did you use before you found that? The like this? Uh, that's what I was getting ready to show you. Oh. One of these. Okay. So I wouldn't bake it in a block. I would put some. Yeah, give it some variation. In fact, let's. let's I mean. So think outside the box, okay? All right, we're gonna take this one and then do something like that. You see that what I'm works. saying? That works. And, and that way you can either use it in a corner or we can build up some terrain or if we want to, then, and I'll show you this, okay? We can take some of these pieces, let's do this, and glue them onto your stuff. That way we're not totally Destroying or using every we're using making use of everything we're using is what I'm getting at. And you see how easy this stuff slices? I mean it's really, really simple, guys. And <clears throat> What's the cost on I guess, some of that stuff? This uh, forest home uh, was like eight dollars for six pieces in a package, <clears throat> and uh, I left you the saw thing over there. Come on over here and come around this side and start carving. Okay, did, did you glue those together? I did. Well, let's get some more glue on there then. Have you tried again using the one from um, the dollar store? I see some of that, you know, white. Yeah, sure. I mean, it doesn't matter where you get it. It's the same stuff. Yeah, dollar store or if you want to use it from a florist supply company. Uh, if I'm using it, if I'm making a layout and I'm using a lot of this, then I'll get it in bulk at the floor supply company. It's like, if you have an account at the floor supply company, it's like $25 for a, a case of it. Okay, so yeah, that's... Now, once you start getting it glued together, then you start, see how I'm starting to shape it? And all of this is coming in here without any any uh, contours in here. So, you get it good? I hope so. All right, let's see. I'm not to get the trash can. 
Uh, you did say again. you did say it did. Oh, thank you. Oh. You did say you were all thumbs. Did you? I wanted you to get it. You did. You did. <laughs> all right. So now that we kind of got our main shape here, <clears throat> and uh, I want to get anything that's a straight edge. Understand that in nature, this is something I learned a long time ago in Boy Scouts. In nature, there is nothing straight. Everything has got some sort of a, an angle or a curve to it. The only thing that's ever straight is man-made. All right? This man's shaking his head up here. Were you a scout? No, not in scout? Okay. Uh, now, I want to take this and be careful. Anytime you're using a knife, obviously be careful, guys. But I'm gonna and this is up. It's so easy. It has, is this easy to work with, Tommy? Yeah. You gotta be careful when you cut too much in your room. But the, here's the thing: if you cut too much, just glue it back on. That's true. You know, just keep working with it. Okay. So now I've got this piece that I've started shaping up here. All right. So now, once I've got that, okay, come on around on this side so if you're carving, you're not going to get on the carpet. All right, now, yeah. So, so then the thing you can do, this is just a wire brush, okay? Just a regular wire brush. And I'm going to take it and take all of those square edges. And knock them out. And if I've got, see, I wanted to have a little crevasse here in between these two hills right here. So I'm just going to take it, that wire brush, and just eat that out. And now I've got this, okay? So, and I want a little clip overhang right here. And uh, if you have a picture you want to model, you know, just take a, take, you know, have your photograph right there beside you and just start building the terrain just like you're talking about. Now, How you doing over there, buddy? Doing okay. Okay. Now, once I've done that, then sanding block. Now, think about in nature, how did, what would, if, if I'm looking at this, and it starts to rain, what's going to happen? Erosion, right? So, where's the water going to run? So, think about that, okay? So, we're going to take this little putty knife, and the water's going to be running from the, the highest point down to the lowest point. But we're also going to make, just going to pop this out a little bit. <laughs> you said you had plenty. What are you doing over there, man? <laughs> Like, is this like the Grand Tetons? It's close. It's close, okay. All right. 
If it'll stay together. If it'll stay together. <laughs> All right. Now, pretty easy, right? So far, yeah. Okay, so far? What time is it, Robert? I don't have a watch. Don't have a watch, okay? It's 16. It's 15 minutes into the clinic, okay? Yeah. All right. So, now we've got a little pattern here of a little spot that we're going to do. All right? Now, the next thing I'm going to do, you got to catch up, man. <laughs> I'm running. All right. So, if I can tell you any one good tip, any one thing you want to take out of here is variety of material types and color. All right? Because if you look at here, see all the different colors of paint that I've got? Yeah. Okay? Nature is not one color. If we were to open the doors out here or open the windows over here and look outside, I mean, <clears throat> just in my browns. See all the different shades? And that's not even counting this one. I've got a darker one that's got a little more red in it. Okay? All of this. Okay? So you want to have all of these different colors available. And the florist foam is really good about absorbing the paint. I mean, and it doesn't attack the foam. Okay? So I'm going to take this, and I apologize in advance for any fumes. The glue works really well. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you didn't glue it right. These are... What are you yeah, well, doing? making one of these. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's already doing okay, it. We'll, we'll retrieve that later <laughs> because I'll use it in another clinic, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's why I raised my hand. Yeah, okay. What kind of paint is This is just Krylon. Uh, Krylon makes a series of camouflage paints, okay? Um, they and they use them for uh, a lot of the hunters use them for painting deer blinds and and their duck boats and stuff like that. Uh, you can buy them at any hardware store, um, and the the camouflage series are all flat, and they're great colors for modeling. Okay, so you're welcome to welcome to get those, and that's what I use a ton of. Um, but if you stop to think, I mean, this one's one of the camouflage, this one's not, okay? So, I'm starting to worry about your tongue. Me too. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the other thing, okay? I've got a little base coat there. So you're going to let me spray paint? I am. <laughs> Can we move that first? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any more plastic? <laughs> I do, in fact. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to make him wear the plastic. Well, it's not so much me as these folks in the front row. <laughs> okay. okay, so Tommy, let's talk about how to paint then, okay? So here's the thing, guys. If we're going to paint, okay, notice I'm just hitting little spurts. I'm not. Okay? This is just little accent stuff. And, uh, so let's come back over here with a little darker color. And I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently because I've got some ledges here, right? Now what's light going to do under the ledge? It's going to be darker, right? So we're going to turn this upside down. And now it's going to add some of that darkness, like the shadows. You can paint the shadows in, okay? You don't have to just make it use the natural light. And a uh, little darker brown. Oh, that's a blue. <laughs> Primer gray. Okay, we don't want that, but... Uh. purple shadow under the rock. Yeah. But, see, I'm going to come back over it. I had the wrong color cap on it. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh, wait a minute. I had... Try, try the blue one. No, this is what I want right here. Yeah. 
hit it with some black. Okay? And, and you'll be surprised when you're doing this. Here. Caramel. I really want sand. Nutmeg. Sand. There's sand. Um, so even though that gray went on there and I didn't like it, it turns out okay, right? What do you think, guys, so far? Good? All right. Okay. Now, you come over and start painting. All right. Now, we've got our base color down, okay? Uh, I didn't take the time to paint the back side. Over here. Over here. Over the paint. Over, I mean, over the plastic. Tommy. Tommy. Remember what I said? little short spurts. There you go. And hold it close. There you go. You're not spraying the whole thing. Let me show you one more time. Okay. Watch this. See how much less paint I'm using than you were? Okay. Because all I'm going to do, I'm not trying to get it like that. Okay. I'm just barely trying to cover the surface and get the green color off. See the difference? Okay, let's try it again. There you go. All right, so now we've got our base color here and we've got some terrain built in, all right? So now we're gonna come back in and start applying some ground cover and some different textures for that, okay? Um, I've also, uh, I, I forgot my Zerons, but, if you had a piece of track um, and you're doing something, you could even have a piece of track laying across your scenery or, or it could be you know, coming down the side or whatever. So think about that as well whenever you're doing your, your things, okay? All right, so it's a different color. All right, so there's all kinds of different things you can use for uh, scenery glue, okay? White glue diluted works, okay? This is scenery cement from Woodland Scenics. Um, I've got, here's some glue right here. I think this one's there. Okay. There you go. Now you see why I have you put the gloves on, right? So for the audience is safe. Well, they're starting to get high on the fumes anyway. <laughs> Okay, so now I've got, I'm gonna, we'll wet this down just a little bit. <clears throat> My sprayer is not doing the best in the world for me right now. It's been a while since I've used it. I really wish it was a, Much. All right, that's all right. Uh, it, when all else fails, you can take your glue, your Elmer's glue. I can get it open. There it is. Now, what happens to Elmer's glue when it dries? Clear. It goes clear. And it goes flat clear. Okay? All right, so now that I've done that, now I'm going to come back in here with some base color. Okay? You ready? Yeah. All right? So take, your, take some glue, spread it on there. And uh, now we're going to come back over here. Now, 
If I'm doing foliage or terrain, what's the bottom layer? Layer. Dirt. Dirt. What's the name of that particular dirt? This one? I it, it just I, something that I had on the shelf. I don't even know. I mean, I buy all kinds of, of uh, scenery materials, whether it's from Woodland Scenics or uh, Arizona. What's the air, the rock and mineral? Yeah, rock Arizona rock and quarry or whatever it is. Yeah, um, I, I love all of their stuff. Theirs their stuff is really good. But I'm always picking up if I go into the hobby shop, um, and some of you guys are from out of town. Um, Discount Model Trains here in, yeah. in Addison is probably one of the best hobby shops in six states. Um, while you're in town, I would urge you to probably go by there and take leave your leave your checkbook and credit card at home because you probably won't have it when you walk out. <laughs> if you're like me, all right. So now um, I'm gonna I, I save every time my wife gets through with a, a uh, dispenser of of uh, spices. Mm -hmm. I grab it because I can. I start. I mean, Parmesan cheese, uh, another uh, Parmesan cheese or something. I don't know. Salt, seasoned salt. This one, salad toppings. You know, I say bacos. I mean, you know, every one that I can get, I get my hands on. And sea salt. Yeah. Now, this doesn't look like it's coming out much. You can't really see it, but it's starting to add a little bit of texture and color. You see that mm -hmm. on here? That's the reason I told you guys to sit up front. That and the high. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Everything helps. You just thought your day was going to get started bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, come over here and grab you some stuff, Tommy. Right over here, buddy. And I'm going to see if I can get my glue dispenser to start working a little bit better for me. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's a good one. We're going to swap that out. Don't dump all my stuff out now, Tommy. <laughs> this is very lightly. You're using it very, very sparingly. Uh, I don't know which one you're wanting. That was the second one you put on dirt first. Yeah. Uh, the one with the salad toppings, I think. Go to salad toppings after that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I've got a little bit better, a little bit better sprayer. Do not try this at home, Tommy. Over the carpet. Okay. See now the glue is starting to. That's better. Much better. All right. Now then, I'm going to come back in here. We're doing a dance, aren't we? Kind of looks like. It. Yeah. Now I'm going to. And you don't have to cover it all, okay? We're looking for highlights, all right? All right, so that's that. Um, let's see here. That's the brown, what do we got here? This is more of that season, that season of salt stuff. If it's not coming out the way you want, then take the top off and just barely sprinkle. <coughs> If you get clumps like I'm doing, okay, just reach in there and pop them down. All right, now, we've got that on. Get back over here. You're dripping. I tried to warn you. I know, I know. All right, now, um, Let's try some foliage. We're going to glue some foliage in. And um, so, where's the foliage going to grow?
Think about that when you're doing your scenery, okay? So is it gonna grow here? Is that too much? Maybe I think it is. This is all just a matter of eye. And you're just gonna have to start playing with a little bit. So I'm gonna put that one there, little spot over here, and some going down the, the ridge right there. Something like, like that. Now, here's where alcohol comes in. Because <laughs> what you want to do is uh, not not drinking. No, okay, sorry. Uh, 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 however, a little maker's mark on the side doesn't hurt either. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to soak this with alcohol. If I can get my sprayer to work. Uh, just popped off. Didn't it? That's blue. White alcohol. Yeah, really. Somebody changed things. Like that says alcohol, doesn't it? Okay. So, let's see what we got here. Let's try that. Let's see if it's alcohol. Yeah, that's better. All right. So, this is a. Uh, I want to soak that before I put the white glue on it with alcohol. What the alcohol does is allow the viscosity of the, the glue in the water, it breaks that viscosity down so that it will, the glue will soak into what you're, you're doing and it won't just sit on the top. Okay? I know I'm dripping now. All right. Go for it, buddy. Okay. Jump right in there. All right. Now, I always have a little tub like this. You see, I've got my other one here, but it's got stuff all in it. But, and I'm going to empty this out real quick. Um, down to the bottom of this, it's hard to see, but I had all kinds of leftover scenery stuff. So I'm going to put this in here, just kind of set it in here now. And now I can take scenery materials. And whenever I have extra or it falls off, it just goes into the tub and I'll recycle it. Good idea? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, we're starting to starting to get into other types of foliage. And if I'm doing that, See anything over that table you want, go grab it. Okay? Okay. All right. So I've got grasses. Here's green grass, burnt grass, tall field grass, gold. Uh, here's a different shade of field grass. Another different shade of field grass. All right. It's like I said earlier, all kinds of variety. I'm going to take some of this foliage right here and take some of this right here, a little burnt. And now we're going to have some different texture in there. And then I can also, this is from a company called Hanley House. Um, they are a doll manufacturer, a dollhouse supply company. Um, you can find them online, uh, but they've got sheets. Primarily, this is for O scale and dollhouse stuff, okay? But if you take this, now I've got a different colored bush that is growing somewhere. They also have this right here. This is hedge or what I think this is what they call um, um, ditch ditch weeds or ditch grass and I've got that and it comes in um, white, yellow, here's some that's blooming, uh, here's some more flowery looking colors here and uh, I can take this and we'll sprinkle this a little bit on here different color. 
And, and here's the thing about scenery, guys. If, it, if you don't like it, just work with it a little bit more. It doesn't take much. Here's some sand. But it's all about textures. And it's all about variety of color. That's what this is all, the, the main thing here. I'm going to take this and just kind of tear that open. And, uh, I'm just going to go here for Okay, okay, you're fine. Uh, I'm going to take that. And, like, another trick that you can do with this is combine the two. And weave them, kind of weave them in and out of each other. And now, I've got a bush that's got variations in it. Alright? So I'm going to take this and spritz it with my glue. And we're going to stick it right over there. Alright? Now, looks a whole lot different than just foam anymore, right? Right. Okay? Now, the next thing that I want to point out is trees. Let's talk about trees. I know you didn't use that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Static grass. Uh, static grass is another good tool. I didn't have didn't prepare for that for this mm -hmm. clinic, but yeah, static grass. Is, static grass is good. The thing I want to warn you about with static grass. Have a seat if you want to. There's a chair right there. Um, the thing about static grass is most people make static grass too tall. Okay, so you stop and think about it. If you put an HO man or an N scale character down on the on your layout, and the grass you've already put grass down, and let's see, where's the field grass? And let's say I'm gonna I'm just gonna give you an example right here. Pull out a clump of this. Okay, so. If I were to put this down and put it here into the into the layout, in HO scale, how tall is that? In N scale, how tall is that? Okay? You've got grass that's just growing up as tall as the top of the room here. Okay? So always take a character of your scale and put it down for your static grass because you don't want it taller than, you know knee high maybe depending on where it is or at the most right because field grass is just not going to keep growing eventually it dies off right so that's a good a good point there that i want to make about static grass um put that back in there another thing you can do with this is if it's too tall just come back in there and clip it okay uh fingernail clippers works good uh cuticle scissors is another way to clip it, but you want to use really fine precision scissors to clip it down, okay? And, and you don't have to make it all the same size either. I mean, make it, you know, terrain on there, okay? So, now let's talk about trees for a minute, okay? Now, this is a tree that comes from um, Grand Central Gems. It's a great looking little tree. They come in bulk. You can get them all kinds in, in various sizes and everything, okay? Mm -hmm. I like this one better than that one, okay? That one to me looks too pine tree, Christmas tree looking, okay? This one doesn't look that way, all right? You see what I'm saying? See the difference, okay? Now, here's the next thing. I'm sorry? Is it a different brand? It is a different brand, and I don't know which one it is. It's just, again, I accumulate okay. so much. But this is, again, from Grand Central Gems. Now, what you can do with these to make them a little more realistic is you can take these and their branches are, are uh, pliable enough to where you can come in here and actually shape the tree a little bit, okay? Now, for in scale, here's something else I want to bring up about trees. When people start putting trees in their layout, I was a member of a club and I, the guys, uh, the club said, we need trees. Now, I took, where is it? Um, okay, 
So this tree right here is not a manufactured tree. It's a homemade tree, okay? It's made out of boxwood hedge. Okay, many of you've got boxwood hedges around your yard, okay? And um, I ran into a situation where one died at my, my house. My landscape guy cut it back too far. It, it topped out and died, and so what am I going to do? I pulled it out and I started looking. Wait a minute. What looks more like trees than real plants, right? And so with this, I don't have to worry about... That, that one's got a little one stuck in it. I don't have to worry about branches not being right, okay? And, and it, it naturally forms all the different branches at that level. Now, this is just one piece out of it, and I got this one because it's really thin, which makes it really nice if I'm putting it up against the backdrop, right? So I take these boxwood heads right here, and I made a thousand trees for the club layout using boxwood hedge. Now, what I did with this, I, I took Woodland Scenics, um, um, the, what's the fiber, the, fi the, the fiber material, spread it out really thin, and then you take hairspray, spray it, and then sprinkle ground foam in the top of it. Now, this is really too thick. If I was going to redo this tree, I would have this ground foam, or this uh, fiber, and we're going to really thin it out because if you stop and think what's the old story in golf a tree is what who knows where's my golfers 90 percent air right yeah and so that's why you always hit the 10 percent of the limbs right when you're playing golf but a tree is 90 percent air so if i'm going to be making a tree and where's that little one i just had what did I do with it? you put it on the other table i thought i did see it over there. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to make this really, 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 really thin so that I can see through it. And now I'm going to hold it up here. You can see, you can see that you can see through it, right? And now I take it and I'm going to put it over the top of the armature. It's like that, and then once I do, I come back with hairspray. That's the, that's the, that's the hairspray. Well, I'm not sitting on that side. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. That's the spike side for sure. The cheaper the hairspray, the better. Okay. And so now I've got a little tree. So I can take that and I'm going to put him down here. And the thing about forest foam, there you go. All right, now these guys here come with no base on them. Okay? But what you can do is take a piece of wood and carve it, drill it, and now I've got a base on my tree that makes it look much more realistic whenever you're doing something with it. Hair on there. Okay? But the point I was going to make about trees is on the thousand trees that I were making for HO scale, they came in and I had trees that were yay tall. Okay? And, and the guy that was one of the heads of the club goes, those trees are horrible. They're, they're too big. They wouldn't be that big. And I'm going, what are you talking about? I said, have you gone down and looked at the right-of-way beside a railroad track recently? And trees are sometimes three and four times taller than the locomotive. Right? So in scale, what would that be? About that big. If you've got an HO scale locomotive. All right? To have a tree that's three times taller than a locomotive, that's nothing. Okay? But he didn't buy into it, and he ended up not using all the thousand trees that I made for him. So, um, anyway. Um, what time do we have? 8.45. 8.45. Okay. Um, 
questions that I can answer for you guys. How long did it take us to do this? Half an hour? Yeah, you know. Um, so I, I urge you to have all of the different types of things you want because variety in nature is what you're looking at. I mean, it's just variety. It's colors, it's, it's textures, it's um, sizes of everything. Don't be afraid to blend. If you're, if you're looking at different types of shades of the year, that always <laughs> makes a difference. I was asking Bob right here a minute ago, when we, before the clinic started, what do you model? Where do you model? What time of the year do you model? All of that makes a difference when you're planning your scenery. Because if you're planning fall of the year, then what colors do you want? Depending on where you are, do I want rust-colored leaves from New England? Or do I want really, really dark shades of, of evergreens that have been sunburnt and getting into these colors in the Southwest in November? Okay? All of this is part of your, your plan. I mean, this or this? Or do I marry them together? All right, And when you start planning your layout, that's a critical point that you need to decide early on is what do I model, where do I model, and what type of year do I model. There's a, a guy in um, Tulsa, used to be a member of this particular region. He got his MMR here in the LSR. His name is Ken Ellers. And Ken has an absolutely stunning layout. Okay. If you walk into Ken's house and you go up to his train room, the wall is covered with first place from just about every category you can think of. He models in S scale. He models narrow gauge in Colorado. If you ask him when, when, what time period is your layout set, he says October 4th and 5th of 1957. <laughs> what? Two days in October of 1950. Now I just pulled the year out, but you understand what I'm getting at, okay? And and but specifically two days. And I said, why is that? He goes, because these backdrop photographs that I've got right here, that are all around the room, it, that's when I took them on those two days in that year on a trip to Colorado. And he came back and made that his backdrop. Now all of his layout scenery is matching. The backdrop photographs. All right. Yes, sir. When painting, I've heard two controversies about uh, the order of putting your paint on: black first or black at the end. I, to me, I, I've done both. I really don't see uh, a disadvantage either way. Um, sometimes I'll put black down, put some more colors in and then come back with another hit of black over the top of it. I've done it all the different ways. And just whatever works good for you, whatever gets you the look you're trying to get. And again, if you don't like it, just you know, paint over it and start over. This is, this is not rocket science, okay? And now what I would also do is practice before I went to the, you know, the, the absolute end of my layout to do stuff. But doing stuff, I mean, you can practice on this all day long, and it didn't cost you anything. It certainly didn't mess up your layout, right? Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir. This uh, florist foam looks like it's a lot easier to work with than the traditional insulation, the blue or pink insulation foam. Have you tried it with the traditional foam as well? I have, and you see what I'm using. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, turn you around so we can see it. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I just I couldn't keep up with him, and I really wanted to. Well, I'm sorry. I want to try to put you on the spot. No, no, no. It's just that uh, it's common sense. Uh, from what I'm seeing, it's just kind of common sense things to uh, add texture and stuff to it. I didn't find it hard at all. Now, and that was what I was going to. I didn't find it hard. That, that's what I was going to get back to and talk to you about. Okay, you said you did. You were all thumbs. You didn't have a clue about scenery. Okay, how hard was this? Oh, it wasn't hard at all. See, that's the thing about this, and that's the reason I named this clinic what I did. Scenery made easy. Okay, because everybody goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, scenery, I, can't use, I just can't use scenery. 
Yeah, you can. You just got to get your hands wet on it. Okay, just dig in and get after it, right? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I see is that uh, uh, I'll need to practice some, but it's just, mm -hmm. it's not hard. It's not, uh, I'm not afraid of it anymore. Let me put it that way. Yeah, that, and that's the key. That was exactly what I was trying to get over is don't be afraid of it. Do not be afraid of it. Just go on past it and, and practice and, and you'll be fine with it. And uh, um, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. And, and like I said earlier, doing it commercially, okay? But guys, this is not, again, this is not that hard. I, wanna, I, I really think that, and to me, okay, the scenery AP served is one of the easiest to get. It really is, okay? Now, how many, let me ask you this question. How many of you guys are participating in the AP program right now? Three of you? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> What's what's up with that? What is it? The achievement <laughs> program. <laughs> the achievement <laughs> program. No, no, no. That's it's, yeah. I mean, how how new are you? Well, seeing as how I didn't have a number yet from NMRA to register for this. Wow. Okay. Well, welcome. First. Okay. Glad you're here. Thank you. Um, you're late to the party, but we're glad you came. All right. I can't get here earlier. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the Achievement Program is a program, uh, you heard me mention Boy Scouts earlier. Uh, the Achievement Program was set up by three Eagle Scouts who are model railroaders 40 something years ago. And it's like earning merit badges in different categories. There's 11 different categories. Once you achieve seven different certificates, in a variety of four different categories, okay, then you have attained what is known as a master model railroader, okay? You're gonna see people walking around with MMR on their tag, okay? Some of us who didn't get theirs put on their name tag won't have it, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, master model railroaders, uh, have, a, have proved a proficiency judged by the peers of, in, their, in their hobby of being able to do that. Now, um, here's the thing, and Jim Lamont back here will tell you, in all of the time that we've done this, how many MMRs are in the room right now? Okay, two of us, all right. How hard was it to get um, What's, what, let me back up. Let me rephrase that. What was the hardest part of it for you? Joining the NMRA. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, no, really. Uh, uh, when I when I came from the NMRA was you know kind of frowned on because it was a little restrictive. Seemed like when I moved here, I didn't have any friends, and I used uh, I, the only thing you could join was an NMRA club because there weren't any others. Where do you live, Jared? I lived above Denver, Colorado. Okay. No, we're now. Uh, just south of Austin, so I'm yeah. in District 4. But anyway, yeah. I'll try to make this a short story. Uh, I, uh, being how I like to, to build on stuff and then I get tired or, or I, I achieve what I wanted to and I set it down, it's not finished. And so when I moved here, I really wanted to be able to find guys that actually speak my language. You know, what's a SD40? Well, wife doesn't know. So at any rate, uh, I used that to, to find friends, and uh, and I thought, well, the NMRA uh, achievement program would be a really good way to motivate me, since I didn't have a real layout going, to finish some of the stuff I did. And uh, the camaraderie that I found, and the guys that would actually help me write, I mean, the paperwork, I hate paperwork. That's the, that was what the answer I was looking for, the paperwork. And, and it gets really simple once you get with somebody uh, gone down the path. That, that, that will help you. And yep. I mean, the guy in District 4 was incredible in getting me started. And the first two or three things, I write it out and it was all wrong. You know, and I trained it out and I said, okay, I figured out how to do it, which is not a big deal. I just was stubborn. And uh, and then within two years, I had my MMR. So, That's it. And uh, so it's, it's like earning merit badges. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, it's like earning merit badges, okay? You work through different things and you show different proficiencies. Now, Here's the thing, out you you have to have things judged on a merit basis of 87 and a half points. All right? 
out of a possible 125. When you do that and you do the evaluation on it, then that means that you've made a, a score of basically 70 out of 100, okay? Or a C score, a minus C score, yeah. So in, once, once you've attained your MMR, some of us inside the, the MMR, the, the ranks of MMR, have said, yeah, all that means is you're a mediocre model road owner. That's it. That's right. But now, here's the other thing, okay? Um, we just had a guy in Division One, where I'm the director, um, get his MMR. He's 89 years old. He'll get. He'll be presented with it tomorrow night at the dessert reception. His name's Stan Prochowski, and um, Stan is number 639. Now think about that. In 40 years, in all of the people who are members of the NMRA, only 639 have gotten, have done the achievement. And it's not because it's that hard. It's because they never filled out the paperwork, which is what Jerry was talking about. Okay? So I urge you to get involved Earn your earn your your different things in your M towards your MMR and your achievement program, and here's the main key why it's going to make you a better model railroader. It just will when you start practicing your stuff and you start practicing your skill. It will get better. Yes, sir. And there's either was or is going to be the, in this this convention a, a clinic on. Yeah, and it's put on by Dwayne Richardson, and Dwayne is the achievement program chair for the entire region. And uh, at eight, in fact, Dwayne was the very first. Um, his dad, Paul Richardson, and Dwayne were the first father and son pair to ever get it in the MMR. Time. Uh, uh, eight 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 okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Where'd you get the gloves? Uh, the CVS. Harbor Freight. Well, yeah, wherever. I mean, they're just they're just medical gloves. Yeah, you can get them anywhere. Just make sure you don't get the one that has a powder in it. Yeah, yeah, get the non-powdered. Yeah. Yes, sir. On this one here, there's a portal. Right. A portal. How did you? Is it hot glued to the? Yeah. To the base. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, you and we just kind of carved it out and mm -hmm. cut the portal to fit what we need. This was for a, a Lionel layout for a, a uh, Marriott Hotel down in Houston. And once we got the second level on there, after the first year, they decided they didn't want two levels. And so I've got some extra stuff left over and I just use it for the clinic. Other question, yes sir? When you use uh, real branches as tree forms, do you do anything to prep the um, branch? You, you know, I, I, I haven't on my own, but there are other people that do. Uh, they will soak them in glycerin uh, that keeps them from being quite so brittle. Um, another thing that if you, depends on where you are in your surrounding area, uh, Dwayne Richardson talks about uh, a trip that he made, rented a car, and uh, when he rented a car, he went up into Wyoming and he found tons of tumbleweed. And so he got 55 gallon drum liners and put this tumbleweed, as much as he could get, into the rent a car. <laughs> and when he did, he came out the next morning and there were bugs all over the inside of the rent a car. <laughs> and Dwayne quickly made the comment when he returned the car, I don't know what kind of car you gave me, but there were bugs <laughs> all in it. <laughs> and the people at the rent-a-car place were so appalled that they didn't even charge it for the rent-a-car. <laughs> Win! <laughs> so, so that would be a case where you really want to bake them, okay? At like 250 degrees for... Well, microwave yeah, yeah. kill them. Microwave, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. They explode, yeah, that's right. Your microwave won't be usable anymore, but you can. You know, <laughs> other questions? How long? Two hundred fifty degrees. Oh, twenty minutes, sir. So. Smoke. Yeah, until it smokes. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. I'll, let me add to it because I use real 
sand on my layout. And of course, Jim, is, Jim's from the Galveston area, so he's got lots of it. Okay. <laughs> flood area. Yeah, the flood area, flood zone. But, uh, when Lauren Newfeld and I were building my layout, mm -hmm. uh, Lauren wanted real sand. So I went down to the architect of the sand place and bought some Brazos River sand. And uh, I said, Lauren, are we going to put this out? He said, yeah, just lay it out on the ground, let it dry. Well, we did that. Next week, we had a crop of weeds. <laughs> so what I came up with was 500 degrees for three hours in your wife's oven. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And it, the, you get benefits from it because when you take, especially the Brazos River or even the Colorado River mm -hmm. sand, um, when you bake it, you get pebbles, and most people throw them away. And the deal is, if you keep the clay pebbles, you've got rocks for your layers. Exactly. Yeah. And it comes out such a beautiful color. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Look at nothing comes up. It kills. It it keeps those seeds that happen to be in the in the ground like that uh, from having any kind of uh, germination. germination. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Mike, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Since you have trees. How many different colors do you flock them with? Oh, I've got probably 10. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, probably as well as I do, you go to people's layout and they've got all these thousands of trees. And they're all the same, same color. color. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> not, not good. Not good. If you, I mean, I challenge you. One of the things I do on some scenery clinics that I've taught before is I'll start out with a slideshow of just <clears throat> driving down the right road. And you start looking at the different colors and the textures and everything like that and the, the different colors beside each other on different trees and the same type of trees have different colors on them next to each other I mean because there's so many different ways that nature uh, becomes uh, colorful and it just I mean it, I, I tell you it you can see pine trees that have this color on them I mean you know, so it, it's not hard, and to I'll, I will sprinkle yellows and golds in a, in a tree like this, okay? Because even in the springtime, you've got some leaves that are left over that from the winter, you know. Right. So it just and again, it all centers around where you model, what type of year you model, and what you're looking for. Because if if I'm modeling East Texas, you're not going to see aspens. Okay, if in and in the in the fall in East Texas, how many maple trees are you seeing? Not that many. Okay, and that's what I model. I'm, I grew up in Tyler, so I model something I'm very familiar with. Okay, and I've got hardwoods and I've got pine trees. Okay, so anybody else? Folks, thank you for coming today. I hope you enjoyed the seminar and I hope it was great.